Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am super excited for today's video. It is going to be my first update in my makeup rehab series for 2024. And I really didn't do an introduction to my 2024 makeup rehab series. And that's because I'm gonna be doing things a little bit differently than I have the past couple of years. In the past couple of years, I've started with a beauty bank of a certain number of products. Um, when I started this, it was 36. The year after that, 30. And then last year I did a beauty bank of 20. I don't want to feel as limited in my makeup purchasing this year and i just want to see how things go when i do it that way um i feel like there were yeah, it's just what i want to do this year it's what i want to do but i'm still gonna have a makeup rehab series and it's almost gonna be like a catch-all like what i got in pr what palettes i purchased what other makeup products i purchased what products i emptied out and potentially some other beauty products i have a couple of fragrances to share with you guys today and I'm gonna start at a beauty bank of zero. I'm still gonna track how many makeup products I bring in versus how many I use up, just as like a fun way to keep track of things, but I'm not gonna put as much pressure on myself this year. As I have in years past, I'm not gonna count eyeshadow palettes towards like a makeup product that is like, a, like I spend to credit. Um, I'm just not gonna do that. But that is really what my makeup rehab series is going to be, kind of like a month end haul as well as like a month end what I used up. I hope that's okay with you guys um and certainly as we go along if there's things you want to see differently or if you want tweaks let it go know in the comments below but if you're interested in seeing all of the makeup that i brought in to my collection whether it be purchases or pr stay tuned first if you have yet to subscribe to my channel and you like project painting content palette themed content or just chit chatting about makeup i'd love if you'd consider subscribing before moving on and other than that let's jump into the video Okay, you guys, I'll leave timestamps in the description box down below in case there's anything that you aren't interested in. I'm always gonna start with PR just because I feel like that's something that like not everybody's interested in, but I did get two generous PR packages this past month that I am literally so excited about. So we're gonna jump right into that. And the first is this one right here. And let me just tell you, I literally almost pooped my pants. <laughs> when I opened up this package and realized that Lawless had sent me something. I wasn't expecting this. Towards the end of 2023, I did get like this document to sell, like to fill out, like to update. And it said specifically with Lawless PR, which I've never gotten Lawless PR before. So I was like, whatever. Um, and then I got this and I like wanted to cry tears of joy. So in this, um, I've taken, I've taken all the products out, but I kept the box because I'm keeping this box. You guys know I am literally like every video I'll find a way to talk about Lawless Forget the Filler. Like I am just such a stan of Lawless Forget the Filler. So I'm keeping this box because it was a moment for me. But in here you get the Forget the Filler Overnight Lip Plumping Mask. This puppy right here, which I was super excited to receive. I haven't tried the Lawless Lip Plumping Mask. And I will say... It's such an interesting product because it almost hurts the slightest amount in like an extremely menthol-y way. But I also feel like my lips are hydrated while doing it. It's so interesting. Um, so I've been enjoying testing that. And then do I have everything else? Where is everything else? Okay, it also came with the Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Tinted Balm Stick, which is currently at my desk at work. But I was really excited about that too because I have gone back and forth on wanting to try the lip balms, but always picked to purchase the Forget the Filler Lip Gloss instead. So I was excited to get to try that. And I like it. I will say like I prefer the lip gloss over the lip balm, but was still very grateful and very excited to have that. And then it came with the regular size of the Cherry Vanilla Forget the Filler, which I actually just recently purchased towards the end of 2023 in the most recent Sephora VIB sale, but I really like the shade, wasn't mad to have another. And then on top of that, we got a jumbo size of the Forget the Filler in Cherry Vanilla. It's <laughs> Cherry Vanilla. So I actually think I might see if my sister, if she, Hannah, if you're watching, or Shayla, if you're watching, let Hannah know. She is welcome to have this Lawless Forget the Filler. Or Shayla, if you want it, you're welcome to have it. And if neither of you want it, I'll keep it for myself. Anyway, um, yes, just so grateful for this. That was so exciting. So 
those four lip products and then Kaja sent over they are they have launched a new product it is the wink dazzle eyeshadow glitter multi stick and they sent these over there are six of them oh no i knew that was gonna happen and let me just tell you guys so it says introducing our first ever dual ended eyeshadow stick and glitter stamp that creates stunning matte shimmer and dazzling glitter looks in three easy steps so i have already swatched all of these and essentially on one end you have like a eyeshadow stick there's three shimmers and three mattes and then on the other hand i think this is really interesting oh yeah i forgot it's twist <laughs> So this is what the applicator looks like and it's just like a little like glitter like stampy sort of thing. I don't know about this end of the product uh, but I am really excited about the actual shadow stick side. When I swatched these when I tried to like remove them they really did like stick. I'm not necessarily an eyeshadow stick girly but you know what i'm excited to have an excuse to test them out so i do have these six eyeshadow sticks which i think i'll try them but then like potentially i feel like my mom might like one of these like maybe 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 mama ruth wants a shadow stick um so i don't know if i'll actually end up keeping all of them but those came into the collection very very grateful for all of the pr and then i just wanted to quickly shout out um a couple of other beauty related products that i picked up i feel like i don't really have a great space to share like what i'm bringing in outside of makeup and i want to like share it because you know lauren from lauren may beauty and fragrance really got me into fragrance last year and i want to share new fragrances that i'm bringing in so um i'm gonna quickly just share a couple of extras that i brought in this month these are not counting towards beauty bank whatever it might be but this brand i don't know if you say is it Okja, Okja. It is the Madame Rose fragrance. And this is supposed to be a dupe for, oh my gosh, what is it? Okay, it's supposed to be a, it's supposed to be inspired by, is it Marley Delina? Marley's Delina, Marley's Delina. Uh, I'm not super big into like the very, very, very expensive fragrances, but I've heard so many people rave about that fragrance. And I was trying to think through I think I'm gonna switch out my little like fragrance tray monthly and so I kind of wanted like something pink to put on my perfume tray not necessarily the best reason to buy something but um and, but I was also really curious about the scent I will say I really do like it I don't really want to spray it right now just because I put on something else um but it's definitely not like my go-to it is definitely more rosy than I typically go for but I don't mind it especially for something different from time to time um and i believe this was it was like either 45 or 49 dollars um and you get 1.7 fluid ounces so and it comes in this really i kept this box because i was like dang this is like a really nice little box that it came into i'm definitely interested in trying out more from the brand they had quite a few that i was interested in but then i was like girl you gotta rein it in like you can't be just buying everything so i purchased that and then I have been keeping my eye out on the Sephora site for when this was going to get restocked and I had to buy it. It is from Fleur. It's their Vanilla Skin Hair and Body Fragrance Mist. I love the skin scent from Clean Skin Reserve. Oh my gosh. I love that scent. It is like right up there with Replica by the Fireside Place um, in like my top, like those are my top two. So I wanted another skin scent and I will say I've really, I am going to spray a little bit of this. I've really been enjoying this. You know when you spray too much in your nose. Really been enjoying this. It, <coughs> this is my own fault. It does have some of this, like I can smell some of the same properties of like that skin scent. Like I smell a bit of, is it just clean or is it skin? It's skin, right? From Clean Skin Reserve. You guys know what fragrance I'm talking about. And if you don't, maybe editing stuff, will post a picture of here. I definitely smell some of the similar like properties with like a bit of vanilla mixed in i love this love it i will say like if i had to choose one over the other i likely would choose the clean scent um but especially for like this time of year when i want something a little bit cozier this is definitely not something that lasts on me all day but i have been loving this so if you like that that skin scent oops hi and you like vanilla ooh, 
highly recommend checking that out and then during the 21 days of beauty for ulta i did end up picking up a replacement for the tula skincare spf the protecting glow this would be my third um tube of this and i just really like this it has a bit of a banana coconut sort of scent which i love it also is extremely glowy sometimes i feel like it's a little too glowy like some people will definitely think this is too glowy but i love it and um it was half off so i was like you know what i'm gonna purchase another one for this year i get a ton of use out of it in the summertime specifically love to wear this when i'm going on my walks and i'm not doing like makeup just because it gives this really beautiful glow to the skin so i did pick that up. oh and then i do have a fourth item i wanted to shout these out because i have been wanting to do like a velvet nail i know they're so trendy right now and so for a uh, press on option i purchased these they're still in the box i don't know how well you'll be able to see like the velvet like shifty effect but i purchased these on amazon and i thought they were such a beautiful color for like valentine's Day. maybe a little bit deep for valentine's day but we're going like a little sultry so i did pick these up as well and i just wanted to share those because i thought they were really cool and i think they were under 10 bucks okay you guys moving into all of the eyeshadow palettes that i purchased and brought in that i currently have in my collection there are some that i'm currently waiting on arriving to me um, I'm gonna start with a few that I swear I've I swear I've already shared these. So if it's a repeat, I do apologize. But I literally went back and looked at like my last makeup rehab 2023, and I didn't list it out. I didn't go back and watch the video, but I didn't list it in my description box. So if I if this is repeating, I do apologize. <laughs> but um, from Unearthly, I ended up picking up because I loved the Fall Magic palette so much. I ended up going back to purchase the Sorcerer's Smoke palette. Um, I actually was most interested in purchasing this palette, but went with Fall Magic because I wanted something a little bit more colorful and something that felt a little bit more unique to my collection. Um, and then I went back and purchased this because I've seen so many beautiful swatches of this and I feel like I can get a ton of use out of this palette, even in my everyday life. And then I also wanted to purchase the Resurgence palette, the palette done in collaboration with Heather Austin. Um, I don't know how this got by me the when this launched, but like I obviously needed to have these neon mattes in my collection especially this neon green which i'm so excited about and the swatches of all the shimmers look absolutely stunning unearthly makes such an incredible formula so i purchased both of those which i'm very excited about and then i also did purchase the angles of illumination palette by bella Beauté bar um this is an all shimmer palette and Bella Beauté Bar, I've just been so absolutely impressed with, and I just want every palette that they ever launch. Although I will say, I only purchased the Dead Roses palette. I did not purchase the Ultraviolet palette um, that most recently launched, and it was tough to talk me out of the Ultraviolet one, but I was like, girl, pick one. Um, I have only reached into this palette once thus far. I actually have this shade on my eyes today the swatches look so beautiful uh, bella beauté bar makes an incredibly dimensional duochrome and multi-chrome shadow and i just literally cannot wait to continue to play with this palette in my beautylish lucky bag i did receive the danessa myrick's groundwork defining neutrals palette which i was so excited about because this is a palette i didn't initially want and then i feel like i've heard nothing but great things about this palette and how great of a companion palette this is but I feel like it's a palette that I wouldn't necessarily go out and purchase for myself. So when I got it in my lucky bag, I was like, okay, I'm super excited about this. I haven't yet gotten around to testing this out, but I got so many comments saying how great of a palette this was. So I'm very excited about that one. I did also purchase the NARS Afterglow Irresistible palette. I mean, are we even surprised like in the least? I hope you're not. One, there's checkered packaging. Granted, it's not like even like a checkerboard packaging. So kind of annoys me a little bit um but we all know how much i love the nars formula and it's almost impossible to talk me out of their palette releases even though i know they all really kind of look the same uh and then i ended up purchasing both the flower moon and the cold moon palette from ensley rain i just heard way too many people talking about how incredible the ensley rain formula was during year-end wrap-ups that i had to purchase so we have flower moon which looks like this i haven't yet gotten around to playing with this one but boy am i excited to um and i also want all of the ensley rain palettes now i have tested out the cold moon palette 
and this i think is going to be a new favorite palette in my collection i love the color story i like the even distribution of shimmers and matte shadows i like the matte shadow like the shades of the matte shadows incredible palette love this one so so much and like i said now basically want every Ansley Rain palette. Um, and then most recently, Heather Austin, um, her affiliate code was bumped up to 20% on Blend Bunny Cosmetics, and I took it as the opportunity. I took it as a sign that I was needing to finally pick up a palette from Blend Bunny. I've had my eye on Blend Bunny for at least the last six months as I've really started to get more into indie shadows, and I knew it was a brand I really wanted to try this year. Um, Speaking of neons, the camera is like not doing this justice at all. These are like UV neons. Like these are so beautiful at the bottom. I literally cannot wait to do this yellow as an inner corner highlight with like a winged liner. Same thing for this green. Very excited to try Blend Bunny out as a brand. Um, and this is the last palette I have to share that I picked up and brought into my collection this month. All right, moving on to all of the makeup products that I brought into my collection. These will all count as negatives towards my beauty bank. I think this year, because I'm changing things up, I think I'm only going to count like beauty credits as things that I actually purchased. And I'm not going to include PR in the number just because I'm not being strict on myself. So I'm just going to track up and down the amount of items that I actually like purchased for myself. But um, like I said, I did get a Beautylish Lucky Bag and a few of the makeup items that were in there. I have the Natasha Denona Pastel Highlight. Used this for the first time the other day and I actually really enjoyed it. I was really excited to see this in my Beautylish Lucky Bag as well because this is another one of those products that I had my eye on that I don't believe I would have purchased for myself. Um, but I had definitely had my eye on all year. We also got a coal liner from the Wayne Goss line, and then I got the Hindash Liquid Black Liner. Also, the Mob Beauty Lipstick, and I believe that might be it for makeup as a part of the Beautylish Lucky Bag. There was a day I showed up to work with no mascara on. Thank heavens, there was a Walgreens right across the street from where I work. So I ran in there and picked up the 5D Lash Pack. Actually, I do have it in here, I think. Do I? Yeah, I do. Okay. I thought it was still in my car, but no, um, I do have it. It's the 5D Lash Pow from Makeup Revolution. I did pick up this mascara. I know I'm on a mascara no buy, but like this was an emergency. So this did come into my collection. And also with one of my Sephora orders this month, I did get a YSL Lash Clash mascara. So two mascaras entered the collection <laughs> this month. Uh, I was in the market for a new setting spray. I've had my eye on the Revolution Sport Fix Lasting Hold Fixing Spray for quite a while now, and I'm getting really close to being done with my Cali Ray setting spray, which is my like finishing spray. That is the spray I use to like lock everything in place. So I knew this was the one that I wanted to replace that spray with, and I did go ahead and purchase this this past month as well. Um, I've used this a couple times too, and I like it so far. And then this I didn't need, but it was also part of the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, and I figured, you know, I, I like to miss my face, so I probably would enjoy this. And I'm counting this as a makeup product because I have been using it kind of as I like after I lay my powder I'll spray this on my skin this also makes a really beautiful priming spray it's the peach and lily glass skin veil mist hydrate and glow and then the final makeup products that I brought into my collection um my mom gave me an Ulta gift card for Christmas and I was like getting the itch to spend it and then there was like either four or five times points one day and I was like, okay, time to make a purchase. And the things that I decided to pick up, Clarins Lip Oil. I love it so much. And I feel like every time I go to look for this shade, which is in the shade Apricot, it's out of stock. It's this really beautiful orange and I die for this shade in the summertime. So I knew I needed to have it. And I was really trying to get up to like, I, mean, I was trying to throw things into my cart that I knew I would want, knew I would use, so that I could use up my full gift card and also like take advantage of the four or five times points. So I picked that up. And then the other two products I got in that order, I picked up from Dior, their Forever Natural Nude Foundation. I've had my eye on this one for quite a while. We all know how much I love Dior foundations on this channel and I haven't tried the natural nude uh, finish yet. So I'm really excited to give this a go. I picked mine up in the shade 
2N, which is a little bit lighter, but I haven't been self tanning as much, so I wanted something in a little bit lighter of a shade, and I'm so excited to test that out because Dior makes my favorite foundation formulas. And then I did also pick up the new concealer from Fenty Beauty. I couldn't resist. I don't typically get too excited about like concealer releases, but I was excited about this one. So great, my camera battery's gonna die. So I did end up picking this up as well. And then the final product I picked up and I was like trying to be like a fun mom in this case. Like I didn't need this, but I have an excuse. It's the, the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask in Cotton Candy. They're new one. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. I'll do it really quick. Um, for this, my daughter has had extremely dry lips and we're almost out of the Glossier Balm.com. And I thought about ordering another one, but everybody says how terrible the reformulation is. So I thought this would be a good thing to get for her. And I thought she would love this because of the cotton candy swirl, you know? Will I also use this? 100%. Selfishly, I wanted it for myself, but I'm saying I bought it so my daughter could use it. <laughs> she will use it too. I know she will really like it. Um, anyway, okay, total number of makeup products that I purchased for myself i'm not counting this mascara because it was like free gift with purchase but i will count this one because i did spend my own money on it so i have one two three four five six seven and i am going to count the things that came in the beautylish lucky bag because i paid money for the lucky bag so we have eight nine ten and eleven makeup products entering the collection right off the bat the first month of the year that being said let's get into all the products that i emptied out in january okay definitely not my best empties month but i did finish off quite a bit towards the end of 2023 and i feel like i'm getting really close on some other products and you know what i'm not putting so much pressure on myself would still love to have 100 empties by the end of this year would still love that but we'll see what happens i do have a couple of exciting empties to share um so we'll start with the least exciting i have my nyx epic ink liner um this is literally i don't know if you'll be able to tell it's literally fraying at the seams um i have been like trying to make this last for the longest amount of time possible i love the x the x the um nyx epic ink liners it is such an affordable option and it is such a good product one of the best black liquid liners i've tried and that's like high end or drugstore I did also finish up my glossy cloud paint in the shade beam uh this took me for freaking ever to finish up but it is finally an empty and i'm so proud of it so happy about it we already have a blush empty it's the first month of the year and we already have a blush empty how exciting is that i did finish up from fresh the rose petal soft lip cream i absolutely loved this this was such a good product this was getting really old in my collection i'm kind of embarrassed as to how long i had this um but it is finally an empty my daughter also really loved this that's why i know she's gonna love this this is something i would potentially consider like I don't know if I would seek this product out to purchase again, but if it ever came into my life again, I would be super excited about it. Or if this was half off and I saw that it was half off, I would pick it up in an instant. It is ultra nourishing, extremely hydrating, a really, really great product. Um, but sometimes it's fun to like try the new scents, try the new things. That's why I don't think I would specifically go seek this out at full price, but it's a really good product and I highly recommend it. And then the fourth and final empty that I have to share for this past month is a powder bronzer empty. How exciting is this? We had no powder bronzer empties in 2022. Um, I did have one in 2023. So I am so excited to be starting out January with a powder bronzer empty. Already have one in the books. So that means we're already doing as good as we did last year in terms of powder bronzers. I do feel like I have quite a few bronzers throughout my makeup collection that have pan on them. So I'm excited to see if I could potentially finish up at least one more powder bronzer. I will say I definitely went through phases with this bronzer where I was really, really liking it, not liking it so much, then really, really liking it again. And then when I repressed it, I, I just all of a sudden felt like it was looking 
much more orange than I remember after I repressed it. So the last like month, month and a half of using this, it wasn't my favorite, but I've basically been reaching for just this bronzer the last couple of months in terms of like, I just really wanted to finish it up and finally have an empty or finally empty this product out. Um, I hit pan on this in like 2021 maybe. And so slowly we've been working our way up to this actually being an empty. So I did finish that off. Like I said, four makeup empties throughout this past month. We brought 10 makeup products in. So technically we are, we brought in, I don't want to say our beauty bank is at like negative six, but we brought in, what that means is I brought in six more or purchased six more makeup products than I have used up makeup products so far in the year of 2024. Um, I do have a makeup products I'm no longer purchasing. And in that video, I talk about like makeup products I truly am no longer planning to purchase for a very long period of time, as well as six makeup products that I am trying to be on a no buy for for six months of the year. So if you have questions on whether or not I'm limiting myself in any way or trying to set rules for myself, check that video out. I'll leave that linked below. Um, but that is going to wrap it up for my update for the makeup rehab series. I would love to know if you ended up purchasing or using up any products throughout the month of January. Let a girl know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you guys so much for sticking around to watch today's video and for supporting me and my channel as you guys always do. I love you guys so much and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.